everybody, it's Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich. Now, a lot of folks love flying kites, and I'm one of those. I think kites have always fascinated me because I just like flying things in general. I've got a drone. I liked paper airplanes, remote control with airplanes. Kites in particular were always a fascination of mine. Um, and a lot of times people think, is it good kite flying weather? You like to have windy weather. But here's the thing. It really depends on the type of kite. Some kites fly great in light winds. Some kites need a ton of wind. Some only really work at the beach. Um, so Chris Mulcahy is going to talk about that today, why kites fly and how weather is related to that, because it really is important to know how the kite actually works so that you know to get the right type to fly. So if you're like not at the beach where you don't have a wind all the time, you kind of need a different kind of kite to go out and fly. It helps have a little bit of wind, but once you get that thing up there, typically a good kite will fly. So Chris Mulcahy is going to talk about kite flying today, which is very fascinating. It's a good day to fly a kite, but it's an even better day to learn why kites fly in general. It's not just the wind, it's a lot more than that. We're gonna take to the air and learn the science behind flying a kite. Okay, are you ready? I'll be honest, I'm not a kite expert. I bought this for $3, but representing Buzz and Woody, right? So I assembled this, but the what I have learned about kites, there are three main parts of it. One, the body. So this one right here, this triangle, it's also called the delta kite. The one you most likely or commonly see is the one that's the diamond shape. That's the classic kite, but there's a bunch of other ones such as the box kite. Part number two is gonna be this, that's the harness, that's where everything attaches to, and the last one is gonna be the line or the control string. So there's a lot that goes into flying a kite. It's not just running, it's not just when it's windy out, there's a lot of dynamics. There are four things that go into the science of keeping a, a kite up in the air. Number one, that is going to be lift. Number two, weight. Number three, thrust. Number four, drag. Now, what does all that mean? It seems a lot more complicated than what it is, but all these need to be in balance in order for them to take flight, to take to the air. And speaking of, let's try to do that before we learn any more. Let's talk about two things that you absolutely need to first off get this thing in the air. Number one is going to be lift. Now lift is going to be the rise through the air. And how that happens is the kite is designed that one side, the winds are gonna be moving faster. On the other side, they're gonna be moving slower. There's a thing called Bernoulli's principle. This was a mathematician back in the 18th century that said once the wind speed or velocity increases, well, the pressure is going to decrease. And when we have a decrease in pressure, as we've learned, that rises up. And that's going to be helpful to rise the kite up. So that's number one, lift. But lift needs to be bigger than the weight. This is very light. It's only made of a little bit of plastic. So we should have no problem, right? All right, let's take flight. Well, that didn't go great. So we had the right amount of lift, it happened, but in order to keep in the air, you need some other balances. The other two, thrust and drag. So thrust, I was running. That was the thrust that we needed, but we also didn't have enough tension, the wind really to get it, where that thrust is either driven by the wind, the tension of the string, or me going forward. But also the drag needs to be in balance. Drag is just the opposite of that, where it's gonna be either the friction of the wind, the wind going against it, and the pressure changes. So let's try this again. This is the thrust. So I didn't have a lot of success today. Also, I don't have a lot of room to run around back here, but the winds aren't especially high. So I was lacking thrust. Thrust is even gonna be the winds that are driving it above me or me physically running with the kite. There was a lot more drag that was dragging it back down. In order for all this to work, you need the lift to equal the weight and you also need the drag to equal the thrust. Speaking of thrust, if you think of airplanes, their engines drive it, so they're able to stay up in the air a whole lot longer. So what are the ideal flying conditions? Whenever you don't see the trees or bushes moving, 
that might be too light of a wind for you to fly. That's about one to seven miles per hour. It's still possible if you have more experience. And there's certain kites like the one that I was flying today that you technically don't need a lot of wind up to eight miles per hour. You can do it, but ideally you want to be in an open field with a lot of space that allows those winds to move freely. I was in the backyard, so the winds were blocked a little bit. Here's the ideal wind range. Most kites don't need a lot of wind, but they fly best whenever there's a gentle to a moderate breeze. That's about eight to 18 miles per hour, but it can be as much as 24 miles per hour, which is technically a fresh breeze. So at this point, you're seeing the leaves and small twigs in constant motion. Small branches are also being moved and smaller trees can start to sway at this point. Once the tops of the trees really start swaying back and forth, well, that might be a little bit too strong. That means winds are getting up to about 25 miles per hour. That could break the string, that could damage the kite, and you're gonna have a short, short day. But now, one more thing, check this out. You technically don't need wind to fly a kite. As I mentioned about thrust, thrust can also be the tension on the string as you're pulling it. These people, don't have any wind because this is an indoor kite flying competition at the Air and Space Museum. It's all by tension and certain moves. This is what experience can do that they constantly are keeping the kite in the air. Pretty fantastic to watch. While I fly with Woody and Buzz, make it a great day and fly a kite. I'm meteorologist Chris Mulkey. Hopefully you'll learn something here. That looks like fun. Actually, now I want to go fly a kite. We've got more episodes online. If you've missed any of our previous episodes, you can go to WCNC.com. We've got a link to our YouTube channel. The YouTube channel has a playlist with every one of these. And we're going back now two months, folks, and we're going to keep these going. Uh, we'd love to help you out. And I'm getting some great requests from people about topics and things to cover. Uh, the interaction's been great online. We really, really do appreciate it. And thank you so much for tuning in today. Please share it with your friends and family. Um, if they're interested in this stuff, it's a great way, especially with us still stuck at home for at least a little bit longer. Hopefully not as long as we think. Um, but even after that, we're going to try to keep these going. Enjoy your day. Have a, a great Thursday. We'll be back tomorrow at one o'clock.